This is a wireless lav mic from DJI. No, they don't just make drones. And this two-person lav mic kit has taken the video industry by storm. I legit see this thing everywhere. In fact, I can't stop seeing it. It's in my dreams. It's haunting me. And this DJI mic kit is popular by good reason. It's good build quality, good sound quality, it's convenient, and it comes from a multi-million dollar brand that makes drones and gimbals. But what if I told you that there was another system with the same specs for less than half the price of the DJI mic. Let me explain. What's up nerds and welcome back to the channel. After I posted an unboxing video on my Instagram of the DJI mic kit, I got an email from a brand called Fullane. They reached out to me asking to do a review of their wireless mic kit. And after looking at the specs and some details, I realized that it was strikingly similar to the DJI mic kit, but was $200 less. So I asked them if I could do a video comparing the two mic kits and they thought that would be awesome. And here we are. But just so you know, this is an unbiased review, no money changed hands, and they don't get to review this video before it goes out. So right now I'm recording on the DJI mic and the DJI mic will cost you $329, which for a budget mic system, this is actually one of the more expensive kits compared to similar mic kits out there, like the Rode Lav kit or the Hollyland kit. And even for that higher price, these have really been insanely popular. But the full AMX 5 kit came into the market, understanding the competition and decided to give something that was even more affordable. The full AMX 5 kit will cost you 129 US dollars. And like I mentioned before, the specs are almost identical. There are a few differences which we'll go through, but I want to establish who these mics are actually for. Number one is that these aren't for pro situations. You're not going to find these on feature film sets, nor are you going to find them on higher budget productions, no matter what the production is. Typically on sets like that, you'll find much higher end brands. Ideally, I I see these types of mic kits for YouTube content creators, vlogging and run and gun type of shooting, possibly even some indie documentary filmmaking. But if you're looking for something that's going to stand up to like the professional Hollywood industry, these are not it. So yeah, let's talk about them. They both feature two transmitters and one receiver. And those are held together with a charging case that charges both transmitters and receiver. And then the charging case is charged via USB-C. On top of that, they both feature windscreens for the transmitter hybrid mic system. And they both feature mobile recording capabilities with USB and lightning connections for iPhone and Android. Each transmitter features a clip and a magnet to magnetize to a shirt or seatbelt or strap, something like that. And the buttons on the side for the DJI mic kit, you'll see a record button, a link button, a USB-C, and a power button. And the X5 transmitters will feature a set button, a power button, and a USB-C port. They also both have a 3.5 millimeter jack for lapel mics or external mic systems if you want to make like a a cool boom wireless kit, that'd be awesome. As far as the receivers go, the biggest difference is that the DJI receiver has an OLED touchscreen on it to control all of the features. Whereas the full aim just has a small LCD screen that you use the buttons on the side to change the settings. And on the full aim receiver, you'll see a set button, a power button, a headphone jack, an output jack, and a USB-C port. And on the DJI receiver, you'll just see an output jack, a headphone jack, and a power button and a USB-C because all the features are controlled with that touchscreen monitor. The recording capabilities of these mic systems are also strikingly similar with a couple of differences. All the transmitters feature internal recording. The full-in kit has four gigabytes of internal recording. That's gonna give you about nine hours of 16-bit uncompressed audio. Whereas the DJI kit has eight gigabytes of internal recording and that'll give you about 14 hours of 24-bit wave audio files. So the DJI kit does have double the internal recording power. As far as battery life goes, the full aim will give you eight 18 hours total of battery life. That's given that you're recharging both transmitters and the receiver in the case twice. Whereas the DJI kit, transmitters and receiver are rated for five and a half hours. But then if you use the charging case, you can get up to 15 hours of battery life with those two recharges. Now there are a few differences, but the biggest difference here, in my opinion, is that the full aim offers a noise reduction feature. Now testing it in this sound treated room probably isn't the best situation for that. So let's go outside. All right, so we're out here on a really busy street and just wanted to show you guys the noise reduction feature with the full aim. MX5. Right now the noise reduction is off. You can tell there are cars flying by. It is very noisy. I'm going to turn the noise reduction on. The noise reduction is now on. One thing I kind of noticed with the noise reduction is it's a very heavy effect and kind of drowns the voice to make it sound underwater a little bit. And this is something that happens a lot with noise reduction. So I think if we were able to adjust that within the settings, if whether it be via USB-C or via the receiver, that'd be awesome, but there isn't an option to do that. So this is the only setting that you get with the noise reduction. 
And I think that might be a little bit of a con. I know somebody's gonna want the difference of it being on my shirt. So this is without noise reduction with the mic on my shirt. This is it with the noise reduction. Again, gonna be a little bit thinner of a sound. Full aim, it does have a little bit more low end. So you might be picking up a little bit more than that than a normal lav mic. Not a super big fan of the noise reduction, but it is a cool feature that they added to it that can be helpful in a dire situation. When it comes to build quality, in my opinion, the DJI mic wins here automatically. Quickly keep in mind that the DJI kit is $200 more, but the build quality of the DJI mic is this really premium plastic, and it has these grippy features and textures to it so that you don't lose control. It just seems a lot more rigid and feels like I paid $329 for. Whereas the full aim kit is more of a cheaper style plastic. It's a lot lighter weight, it doesn't handle as well as the DJI kit does, and just feels a lot less premium to be completely honest, but it is $129. I wanna mention real quick the placement of the magnet. If you look at that, it's kind of placed in the center of the clip. Now, this may not seem like a problem up front, but if we look at the DJI mic, you can see it's placed a little bit higher up. Now, when you put this on somebody's shirt, you see how on the DJI mic, it hangs really nicely. And when I move back and forth, it doesn't like jitter around very much. Well, when I place the full aim on my shirt right here, you can kind of see it, it like leans forward a little bit, causing it to jiggle and move around just a little bit more. There's just not as much security with the placement of that magnet. That's just something I noticed. It may not be that big of a deal, but it did kind of bug me. So this whole video, you've been hearing the audio quality of these lav mics with a little bit of compression and EQ. But this is the audio quality in its raw, natural state. All I've done is lifted the levels so that they're loud enough for you to hear. So this is the DJI mic kit with the raw audio quality. And this is the X5 kit with its raw audio quality. No mixing, no EQ, no compression. All I did was bring the levels up. In my opinion, I think the DJI mic kit sounds a little bit more crisp here. It just has a little bit more high end while still maintaining that low end and mids. So that raw unmixed quality doesn't need as much mastering in order for it to sound good. Whereas I think the X5 kit sacrificed high end in order to boost those lows and mids. And maybe that's just my voice, but I think I prefer the unmixed sound of the DJI over the unmixed sound of the full aim. But after doing some light compression and EQ, this mic can sound pretty dang good. Now I know I've been holding the mic the entire time and that's just because I feel a lot more comfortable holding the mic. It gives me something to freaking do with my hands. But this is the sound quality of the X5 when it is magnetized to my shirt on my chest, right in the center of my sternum. This is definitely going to boost those mids and get rid of those highs a lot more than when I was holding it right here. And this is the DJI mic sound quality test when it is magnetized to my shirt in the middle of my sternum. Again, I just think the raw audio sound quality of this mic is a little bit better than the X5, which it should be. It's $200 more. All right, so we we have the full AMX 5 gonna do a quick distance test. Right now I'm about eight feet from the camera. We're just gonna keep walking until it drops out. So right now I'm walking, walking, and typically we want direct line of sight. So I'll kind of walk backwards and this gives us a good line of sight. I guess I'm around 50 feet away. I'm probably more than that after the Hollyland video where I was nowhere near close to measuring. But a decent distance. So we got some clean audio I'm gonna turn around. We're probably 200 feet away now. Still walking backwards. Again, this is direct line of sight. We're clean audio, turn around. And he drops there. I don't think I'm quite 500 feet, but I'm probably 350. I'm gonna go behind this concrete and it's definitely gonna drop out here. Hopefully we're still clean. But when I'm facing directly towards the camera, I doubt you can even see me on camera right now. But there's kind of your distance test. This is around 600 feet. Okay, so I'm turned around. I'm not even 50 feet. I'm probably 20. So as soon as I turn around, I start putting obstructions. Now I'm, a, I'm a big guy, but I'm not that big. But that, that is a little bit, that's a little concerning, I'm not gonna lie. But for $125, not a bad deal. All right, so now we have the DJI mic kit and gonna do a distance test with it. Real quick, I'm about six feet away from the camera. Gonna do a little spin around to test the signal. Should be pretty clean. Gonna back up to about 25 feet. Apparently had a little bit of a drop in the signal. So I'm gonna spin around and see if we lose signal here. So we did lose a little bit of signal right there. So as soon as I turn around, for some reason we're losing signal when I start to turn around. Maybe it gets a little bit worse over here. I'm gonna keep going. Direct line of sight. Hopefully this still maintains at least a really good signal. But obstructions is the biggest thing you're gonna struggle with with these lav mics. They're just not gonna have as strong of a signal comparatively to like 
some Sennheiser lav mics, a lot more high-end lav mics over there. And that's typically because they use either a stronger Wi-Fi signal or they use radio signals. And those are gonna be way more powerful than the Wi-Fi signals that are used in these mics. I'm probably about 150 feet right now, but gonna do a little spin, see if we dropped out. We did drop out as soon as I spun, but let's see how far we can get with the direct line of sight. Evening officer. I hope that officer's having a good day. I hope that biker's having a good day. So now we're probably around 300 feet away, maybe more. Direct line of sight, no issues right now. Great signal. As soon as I turn it's going to start struggling, if not drop. I'm just gonna go as far as I can. Okay, so I'm probably around 500 feet away, if not more. Can still hear me. And as soon as I turn around, some more drops. If you're filming from this distance, you're crazy. I'm gonna kind of go behind this tree, see if we get some dropouts with the tree. Yep. So honestly, pretty considerable. Um, I think the foam maybe struggled a little bit more with obstructions. Both are performing basically the same. Really surprising to me that the obstructions struggled so much. So both mic kits seem to perform about the same when it comes to signal distance. Um, as soon as you put an obstruction in the way, even if you're only 25 feet, it's gonna struggle, but in like a YouTuber fashion or talking to the camera like this, perfect. So I just got a haircut and I wanted to show you guys that you can also use these to record on your phone. So I'm using the front facing camera and just recording this on my phone. Makes it for super easy convenience. I've made a few reels and Instagram stories using this feature, so. And this is with the DJI mic. And this is with the full aim mic. Anyway, just have it mounted on my chest. Super convenient for quick on the go content creation for Instagram, TikTok, stuff like that. All right, before I give my overall opinion and recommendation for these mic systems, I wanna hear what you guys think. You've been listening to this video the entire time and hopefully you've been listening with headphones. I probably put a title to tell you to do that. Do you think that the DJI mic kit is a little bit more crisp? Do you think it maintains a better high end or low end or mids? Or are you kind of liking the budget sound of the full aim kit? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Comments. All right, so my overall opinion and recommendation is this. If I was in a position where money was the first consideration when purchasing a product, I would 100% buy the full length kit because $129 is not that big of an investment when it comes to building my gear kit. And for a situation like YouTube, social media, stuff like that, things break, things happen. So $129 to replace something is not that big of a deal. Maybe that is that big of a deal and I'm, I'm being inconsiderate. If I am, I apologize, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but obviously I did end up purchasing the DJI kit myself. As far as budget budget goes, I think the full aim is a fantastic option. That noise reduction does struggle a little bit and maybe in a future firmware update, full aim could offer the ability to adjust the intensity of that. And if they do, that would be awesome. But that is an awesome feature to offer in order for this mic system to be a little different. And Anyway, hopefully that all came out the way I was hoping it to and that it helped you kind of decide which kit is best for you and your situation. Links to purchase both of these mic systems will be in the description. There are affiliate links, so if you do end up purchasing one of these kits, thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot. I just really quick want to say thank you so much for 16,000 subscribers. That is absolutely fantastic. So excited to invest a little bit more time into this YouTube channel and hopefully make it my full time job. That'd be awesome. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of these mic systems in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking.